my dear students, today I will be discussing up a second topic from emergency medicine. In the last class, we discussed about paracetamol poisoning, the effect of paracetamol on the liver cells causing hepatic necrosis and the effect on renal tubular epithelium causing renal tubular necrosis, then the clinical symptomatology of paracetamol poisoning, then the treatment. Today, I would be taking up a topic carbon monoxide poisoning. Now, as far as carbon monoxide poisoning is concerned, it is not that rare a poisoning. And we are usually asked questions from CO poisoning in our exams. So as far as the characteristics of carbon monoxide are concerned, you have to remember the features of carbon monoxide and the physiology it alters. So as far as carbon monoxide is concerned, it is a tasteless gas as well as odorless gas. Now in addition, you have to remember that carbon monoxide is produced as a result of incomplete combustion and you can get carbon monoxide in multiple conditions like, uh, uh, I mean say fires, multiple accidents involving fires as a result of people working in paint industries carbon monoxide helps to be an industrial solvent and in a lot many industries you can get carbon monoxide poisoning now basically carbon monoxide as an agent has got this capability to bind hemoglobin and to produce carboxyhemoglobin and what this carboxyhemoglobin does, it has got a negative effect on the tissues. It inhibits the oxygen delivery to the tissues. That means it induces an environment which is not aerobic at all. So by impairing the oxygen delivery to the tissues, in addition to that, it also causes inhibition of cytochrome oxidase. And what inhibition of cytochrome oxidase does, it causes tissue hypoxia. So once the tissues get hypoxic, you can well understand what will be the consequences of tissue hypoxia. Now, how do the patients with carbon monoxide poisoning present? They can present with subtle signs like headache, malaise, nausea, and vomiting then there can be a phase in which the patient will be seen hyperventilating and the patient might be hypotensive. Now classically on neurological examination, the patient will be having increased muscle tone. All of a sudden, a patient will develop increased muscle tone with increased reflexes. Hyperreflexia would be a very important early feature of carbon monoxide poisoning in addition to extensile planters. The planters will be moving extensively, so they will be having extensile planters in addition to late feature like convulsion seizures. Classically asked is the cherry red discoloration of the skin in case of carbon monoxide poisoning as well as the capacity and the capability of carbon monoxide to cause tissue necrosis, especially the necrosis of the skeletal muscles resulting in rhabdomyolysis. Now, this tissue hypoxia effect in the pulmonary vasculature and the brain can lead to pulmonary edema and cerebral edema. So they are very important clinical features which can in indicate a severe carbon monoxide poisoning. Now, as far as carbon monoxide poisoning is concerned, we have to remove the patient or the person from the exposure, from further exposure. So the first thing is to remove the patient from exposure without harming yourself as well. The second thing is that you have to have a whole lot of support. You have to have the ABGs, the electrolytes, the ECG. You have to monitor the patient fully by all parameters and you have to just after removing him from exposure, you can start hyperbaric oxygen. Hyperbaric oxygenation would be very effective theoretically and we will be going to the treatment of CO poisoning in detail in our pharmacology. But here you have to remember 
the features I have just mentioned about carbon monoxide poisoning. So we have to just sum up the class and remember these important facts about carbon monoxide poisoning. I wish that you would be just concentrating on poisonings as well. They are frequently asked questions in our postgraduate exams. Thanks a lot.